Hello everyone, Attack Power here for Game 3 between Pierre Tanner and Mamil in the semi-finals of the Steel Division 2 Division 1 League. And I have with me a special guest, Mamil himself. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, aren't you? I'm doing fantastic. Their matchup today is on Haro Shaje, and on the left in the red, we have Pierre Tanner playing CIABG on Maverick Income. And on the right, we have Mamil playing 20th Panzer, also on Maverick Income. So Mamil, give me your thoughts. What were, what were you thinking in this matchup? So uh, I was player one, I picked uh, 20 Panzer first, which I was very happy about because 20 Panzer is a good division that is often not banned because it's not one of the best divisions. And uh, Tanner counterpicked with um, CABG, which I find a bit odd because 20 Panzer has a lot of good tools to deal with uh, CABG, especially on this map. So tank-wise, CABG strength is the Cromwell spam. And uh, 20 Panzer has a few tools to deal with that. You have the Panzer Freeze, which should all trade the Cromwells, since they will both pen each other most of the time, same range, but the Panzer Free is slightly cheaper. You have the T-34-76, which will bounce a lot of Cromwell shells because it has 90 armor, and the Cromwell has 90 penetration. And you have the IS-2 that uh, Saibi G can struggle against because uh, you only have 17 pounder to deal with it. And at range, it will bounce a lot against the IS-2. And the 20 Panzer can bring the Grille to deal with the 17-pounder. So it can be rough for CABG in that regard. Um, there's also, air-wise, there's also a very interesting thing on this map is that this map is very separated. You have three main areas of fighting that are very far away from each other. And so you need to have a Y on all three sides. And my idea of 20 Panzer is that you have very cheap air that can bully people very effectively. You have the GOs that give you vision and can bomb things. And then you have the Stukas. Stukas are very bad bombers in general because of the animation. It takes so long to drop their bombs. But if your opponent doesn't have a in front of you, it's a very cheap way to bring bombs on, on your opponent. And then you have the cluster Stuka uh, that is very effective as killing tanks if there is no E in front of you again. So on this map, I would say uh, 20 Panzer is very strong air-wise. And to counter it, ideally, you want something with 25 millimeter AA so you can have one at least on a, every area of fighting. Um, CABG has a crystal AA, which is decent at that. It's not uh, 60, 60 points. It's not too expensive. So you can also have uh, some AA everywhere. So just a bit less efficient as some Soviet data in that regard. Now, I do have some questions just deck building wise. I noticed you're double mm -hmm. vetting your Grilla. Why, why double vet the Grilla? I've noticed I never use four Grille. Uh, sometimes I use one, two. Extremely rarely I use three, so I double vet it just so it's more efficient. Interesting. Yeah, it's just one of those units I feel like you, I always want and I never have enough of, so I'm always afraid to double vet them. Um, well, I, I always want them, obviously, but I don't use that many of Like, I, I keep them alive for long if I use them, so I don't need to replace them. A good argument. You are better than me, so your stuff doesn't die. Very true. <laughs> I mean, to you, to take your range stuff, I just try to keep them uh, far away from <laughs> enemies so they, they stay alive. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and going for a lot of Panzer IVs, uh, like the, the support tanks, I should say. A lot of Panzer IV support tanks, assuming just because they're good in the central town. They are good. Like, it's very good at supporting. I mean, it's very cheap armor. It's very easy to do combined arms warfare with the Panzer for this reason. You have a lot of cheap armor you can combine with your infantry. Um, also, they should trade decently against um, uh, against the Cromwells. But yeah, I, I love those things and the Panzer III ends. They're amazing support tanks. Yeah, and my final question, what was your worry? So you do have a card of Panzer IVs. Obviously, the Panzer IVs kind of trade awful with the Cromwells because the Cromwells are cheaper and will pretty consistently kill the, the Panzer IVs. Uh, what were your thoughts on dealing with that? So I took the... 20 Panzer has cheaper Panzer IV, which is quite nice to have. Uh, in general, I would always take the cheaper Panzer IV. It doesn't trade that badly. I mean, not as badly as other Panzer IV against Cromwells. And it's always nice to have something with a longer range. Uh, you can use that a bit on Haro Charge. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on CIABG currently, like its current position in the meta? I think it's quite good, but it has some weaknesses. Like, it, it's really dependent on the map and the matchup. Uh, like, the lack of CQC infantry can be a big problem. On, on the map, like Haro Charge, especially since you have a lot of fight in, in deep forests or in the city where you need some CQC infantry. And uh, how charge you, like you have nine flamers and what, you have, what, six uh, units with Molotov that are not really dedicated CQC to yeah. take them in B. Yeah, so it's a bit limited in, in CQC department. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, this division is obviously rated quite highly for most people. 20 Panzer has been good forever. 
Um, it's I, yeah. I, I actually feel like it's kind of an underappreciated division right now. I, I don't. Uh, I agree. Yeah, for me, it's one of the, one of the best division. That's not so good. It it gets banned all the time. Yeah, and it's just all around. Like I'm never afraid to first pick twentieth Panzer because like nothing really counters it because it just has all the tools. But it's also not like crushing anything. Yeah, you have everything. You have light armor, you have medium armor, you have an IS-2, you have a lot of infantry, you have cheap infantry with the Panzer Grand DP, you have CQC infantry, you have uh, a few planes, you have good AA, you have everything. Yeah. Now, the match is getting started by one more quick question because I'm, I'm, you're using them and I never do. What are your feelings on Urzat's trooping right now? It's a nice midfield. Uh, it, it pushes the front line a bit for 15 points. It's a nice to just... Send them and see what's what's there. I use it more as a mid shield than anything else. Okay. So starting off here, we see you're you're deploying pretty standardly. Nothing too aggressive here. Going to grab your own. Of course, he's bringing the FFO Fusiliers in the traction. I'm not a huge fan of this leader like traction thing that has been. I'm not. I think I saw you do it in the last game. Um, well, you don't have a choice. Like if you only your leader is in traction, you take them. Yeah, I would just say don't take tractions, and I don't want to lose my leaders like that. Uh, attractions are amazing. They are Especially amazing. The that's true. Up north, your 45 mil is getting on top of a Damler, so that's definitely a big plus there. He does have recon in the church tower already, which is a big deal. That can really uh, give you a lot of information. And down south, he's making a huge push. What, what do you do when you see this? Because I'm sure at this point you saw it. Well, yeah, I was expecting a big crumble push somewhere, either at the start or later on. So I brought things everywhere to counter it. You have the 45 millimeter in, at the north, you have the Panzer Shrek in the south, and you see I'm already bringing Panzer Freed. Uh, as reinforcements yes so yeah i, I kind of expected this to come and i know like if i can bring reinforcements quickly enough i can stop that but uh, the speed of cromwell is always dangerous well yeah and, he's, and it's not even this is most of his anista too which is our of course his best infantry by far um he's bringing those all in right now uh in the center town your double panzer three looks like it should be able to mop up anything that gets too close and it looks like you'll even capture that center flag there uh, yep there it is so bringing you to an early 1411 yeah, and uh, I will bring the Ufa on the church as soon as I can. It's always nice to have the vision. Yeah, church towers, everyone. Don't forget, it lets you see way further than it looks. And up north, you've, of course, grabbed this easy flag to grab with a pile of Sturm Pioneers and a Flampanzer. How do you feel about flame Flampanzers, half-tracks? It, it's very special unit. Uh, it doesn't perform well against Soviet divs because the PTRD will eventually kill them. Um, but in light cover, it can do a lot of damage to infantry. Yeah, absolutely. It it's very like sometimes it does wonderful, sometimes it does nothing. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a weird unit. It, that is the feeling with it, and, and I mean, yeah, I mean, they're twenty five points. If they if they work, they work so well. If they don't work, yeah, they just kind of insta die. Yeah, but it's not that expensive either, so it's not the end of the world. Now we do see down south the pressure from Tanner is pushing you back. Is there any panic in your heart at this point? Well, my Panzer Shrek just killed uh, Cromwell. So I'm quite happy about that. My reinforcements are coming in. Uh, I have T-34 coming in, more a new Panzer Shrek, some of those Erzats to have meat. I, I'm a bit, it's a bit dangerous, obviously, but I feel confident, like I have the troops I need to defend. Well, both Damlers going down here, one to uh, one to the Panzer Faust, I assume. Oh, and, well, okay, Tanner getting a little too aggressive here. <laughs> oh no, oh my. Wow, yeah, I kill. In a few seconds, I killed all of his armor in the south. It's uh, yeah, very good. He must have felt pretty good about that little exchange. Yeah, especially since I killed two of his AA and he has three in A. So I know my Air Force will, my, will be able to bully him a lot. Well, and it's funny because 20th Panzer, it's, its Air Force is solid for what it has, but it's certainly not like the highlight of the deck, right? We don't go into this going, oh, 20th Panzer Air Force is the bomb. It, it just is good. You know, it's like it, everything. It, it, it's... It's very vulnerable to enemy AA, but if there's no AA, it's very cost efficient to bring the structure. Like the, the Stukas are very cost efficient if there is no AA in front of them. Yeah. So yeah, now that I've killed two of his AA pieces, I'm very confident that I will be able to do a lot of damage with my Air Force. Now his own Panzer Shrek now picking up, well, should have been picking up one of your Panzer threes here. There it is. Gets one of those. More armor moving in. He's countering with some Cromwells and more infantry, but certainly less less dangerous infantry for sure up north you're making a nice push here uh but the zanista doing some damage as as they would yeah uh, i mean double champion against zanista should be a win for champion easily yeah 
And you do now see his Crusader AA is now up north. So I guess at this point you can confirm there's no more AA on the map since you killed two and you see the northern one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, center, nothing is happening. Like, I have the hope for in the church to see if he is doing anything. But I'm, just, I'm fine fighting just himself and north right now. Well, yeah, and that's always tough with this map. And, like, Orsha East is the same sort of thing where you have these, like, quadrants, these, like, areas of fighting that are far apart, like, three separate areas of fighting. And you're constantly, like, bouncing between. We do see the Flampons are taking out a leader up north. So there you go. That's doing exactly what you said it would. Yeah, and uh, I, since I saw his Cromwell and Crusader and bring a Panzer Strike to try to get rid of those. And some more tanks. And you did take out the Zanista quite easily, actually, with your double Sturm Panzer. I, I, uh, not Sturm Panzer, Sturm Pioneer. I, I, I guess you just have to call Sturm Pioneers in groups of two, right? Depends. Uh, if you have the Erzatz Smith in front of them, it's fine as well to have one. Like, the Erzatz will suck up damage, and then the Sturm Pioneer does the damage. But I, uh, so you're saying basically they shouldn't be by themselves? Yeah, they shouldn't be by themselves, that's for sure. Yeah, they are quite fragile. They die quite easily to most things. But now you have a big gap up north here, picking up this 16-8. So you should be, I would assume you're feeling quite good at this point. Yeah, yeah. like his push down south is dead. Uh, my push down uh, north is working very well. The center, nothing is happening. Like everything is going as I want it to be, go. And was the northern push, this was your initial plan to go this deep with your northern push, or did you just sense an opportunity and went for it? Well, I've, I thought like I would capture the, the first flag and then he will bring a lot of Zenistia or something to try to take it back, but no. So I just went deeper. It was just open, so always take the initiative. It's, it's very like not taking the initiative can kill you. When you have an opportunity, you have to take it. Yeah, that's definitely for me personally, that's a common problem as I play too defensively. And we see many players yeah. do the same thing, where we ju you just kind of, you get some ground and you're like, all right, now I'm going to chill here and be happy that I captured this ground. And you don't, uh, you don't continue the momentum where there's momentum to be given. Yeah, you can see the North my Panzer Shrek taking all the Chromal 6. Oh, that's nice. Now you're going for the Crusader AA. Oh, no. Oh, no for Tanner. I can't help. I can't, <laughs> I can't help being fair to both, even though you're here. Oh. Yeah, understandable. And I know because yeah, no, he has lost all, all of his AA, it has nothing on the map. My geos can just give information for free forever. Oh. And uh yeah. I say oh because I, I, I'm I know I've been in this position before and I just like I, I'm feeling for Tanner right now. Because if that had happened to me, I'd be crying. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Yeah, running out of AA is I, I think one of the worst feeling things in this game. Well, yeah, it happened to me in game two. It happened to Tanner in game one. And Here you we can see the Stukas going in. Yeah, there it is. Do you, so I'm not a fan of JU87s at all. I saw you both using them in several games in this match. Are are they more meta than I'm giving them credit for? Well, they're good on maps where you, the areas of fighting are very far away from each other because okay. then the enemy would struggle to have AA everywhere to cover everything. Okay. And so the, then they can do damage and they're very cost efficient at bringing explosives. Oh, now you're killing the 25 pounder with the GO. Oh, that's dirty. That's dirty. The napalm yeah, should then... finish it off, I would think. He does have a Spitfire yeah. coming in now to try to actually do some AAing. Oh yeah, there it goes. Wow, wow. Whew. Yeah, that, that, that's a very good kill. Yeah. Uh, what happens when your AA is dead? Like your artillery becomes exposed. Well, yeah, you really can't bring in support weapons because the opponent could just fly right in. And of course, you have a Flak 43, one of the best AA pieces in the game, easily stopping that Spitfire. Yeah. Um. You know, I, yeah, so I, I would not suggest to people to take a JU87 into, say, the rank queue or quick play or anything, right? I mean, they're... It's very map dependent. On some maps, they are okay. On some maps, they are very bad. And it's also enemy dependent, obviously. It depends on the division that he's playing and on... Like, if you're playing against something at a 25mm AA, it's completely useless. Yeah. Uh, if you're playing on a map like Horsha G or Slotsk West on the, on the second game or Orsha East, then since areas fighting are very far away, you can use gaps and try to damage with them. But He's, most of the time, they don't, don't perform very well. These Geos are fun little planes. We don't see them very They're often. They're amazing. Yeah. They're kind of like, um, uh, what is the, what's the biplane that the Soviets have? That's 20 points that uh, Tarina gets and second guard tank. Um, it's got the bombs. Uh, it's got 450 kilogram yeah, bombs. Yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're talking about. I don't remember the name. It's yeah. yeah. Quite good. Yeah, 450 kilogram bombs for 20 points. 
Spitfire does get in, though, there and takes out one of your Geos. Uh, looks like it might take out two. Eh, nope, can't get on target, although that Ju-87, of course, in a very dangerous spot with that floating around as well. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have AA, so he's trying to bring anything he can to defend himself. Now, down south, we're starting to, things are starting to get gummed up a little bit here. He's got a lot of troops, but I don't think he can really get out with your massive armor sitting here. I know his troops are dead. It's very cheap infantry, low HP. There's a few Zenisti left, but not much and no armor to support it. Uh, up north, he has not successfully penned you in. You didn't make another breakout into the town here. Uh, Krom will no. fire from the other side, trying to poke through here. It's a bit, it's a bit difficult to hold this one you, once you take it because like red reinforcements are very close and the blue reinforcements are, well, very difficult to get in. And it's not, it's not really a lot of positions where you can really defend yourself or put AT and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I took this flag, but I don't know how long that I would be holding it for. Yeah, it, it's a yeah, it's it's always tough going up that northern side because the flags once you get past that, the first one's like free. Right, that flag yeah, on the edge. Yeah, basically, yeah. You, you get in, you get in there first, and then there's big fight in the forest. And if you win that, you get that flag free. Yeah. Yeah, like this, that flag is basically free for the blue player. Um, I, I do think this map's a little bit easier for the blue side. Would you agree? Well, I mean, blue can take one flag very easily, that's for sure. But after that, pushing on the next two flags is very complicated. While for red, if you can push on your um, in, the, in the south, you can grab three flags very quickly. Like if your push is successful, you can very you can do a lot of the damage very very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I just find it so predictable that, you know, most people throw a lot of defense down there. I, I also think the red side of the town is so much harder to hold. Like, once you get pushed out, you're out. Like, that's the end of it for you. While, on the other hand, blue has that whole stretch of extra buildings that allows you to get back into the town if things go really bad. Yeah, you have a bit more, but I'd say the city fight is fairly fair. Who takes a church, I think, is a big advantage as well. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, if you can get the vision with that, it's a, it helps a lot. Yeah, I would even say if you lose the church, I would just mortar it or something yourself to kill it. So the yeah, yeah, you should. You yeah. definitely should. If, if, if you if you lose a church, you know your enemy has recon there. He's getting a lot of vision. Just destroy it. Yeah, it's it's too much value. Like you just you just know everything your opponent's doing. It's absolutely devastating. Um, I, I think a lot of new players underestimate how valuable it is knowing exactly what your opponent is doing. Um, yeah and being able to respond to that. And we see here, you just continue to keep the pressure on. We're now into B phase, so both players getting their tons and tons of points, um, trying to apply the pressure where they can. Um, I'm surprised you didn't deploy anything to cut his reinforcement road off there, down south. You could have thrown- Down south? Yeah, like one of these tanks could have looked right down this road and killed like, say, these FFO Fusiliers coming in right now. Yeah, and then he brings an AT and just kills your tank. It's uh, a bit dangerous to do. It, it can work, but like you have to be careful with it. And if I'm not paying attention all the time, it's just going to lose a tank. Understand. In the north, I'm a bit overextending at the moment. Like my shrimp pioneers are a bit too aggressive, trying to grab the next flag. Yeah. And I've lost a lot of HP on them. And now he's bringing a lot of uh, of armor, chromal spam, obviously, to try to retake those flags. Well, and he's doing all right. The Panzer threes are going down. We're seeing those slowly die. Now we have a horde, a horde of Ju-87s coming in. So you weren't worried about the fact that now he's got access to AA again. Yeah, I mean, it might be here, it might be not, I'll take the risk. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll get into the GG7 somewhere else in a minute or two. Yeah, that's true. J87 I know, nice like, job. he's he's crumbling, he's trying to, to bring as many units as he can on the front line. He doesn't necessarily have the points to invest in air quite at the start of B. Oh yeah, that's, that's definitely true, yeah. And your J87s do take out the leader tank, so that's fabulous. Typhoon did come in, he's trying to... You know, the Typhoon, obviously a great fighter as well as its AT capacity. Yeah, it is. My A is a bit late for that, unfortunately. Yeah, but your JUs, I mean, you're, you're microing them around to dodge this Typhoon. It's not the most maneuverable plane in the game. Especially with uh, AT rockets on there. Yeah, and now he gets forced off pretty easily by the SDK of Zed. Now he's got a Spitfire coming after you. Oh, no, he's going after, yeah, he's going after the Geo. Killing those is honestly more important than killing the JUs because the JUs don't help you see things, the Geos do. Yeah, it is, it is. It's very funny the Geo crash into one of his units. Oh, it does? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so frustrating because it's complete RNG. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. It's very funny to watch. Uh, in the town, looks like you're making a push now. Panzerstrike managed to kill off that Flammpanzer, and unfortunately, he jumped it back the wrong direction. If he had jumped it in these forward houses, he could have killed those Panzer IVs pretty easily. Yeah, I am bringing the light armor of uh, 20 Panzer to try to support my infantry. And then I have the Geo to give me vision on what he, ha what he has. 
Now those Cromwell 7s will definitely give you a bit of an issue because the 120 millimeters of armor is quite tough to crack with what you got there. It is, the Panzer 3L has the EPC art and go through it, but yeah, it's definitely a bit more difficult to take care of. I'm bringing a bunch of Panzer 4 to deal with that though. Oh yeah, look at them all coming. And I, I do feel like you kind of need two Panzer 4s just to actually get the job done cleanly. Well, you always want to fight in uh, with numerical superiority. Like fighting in 1v1 is a uh, dice roll. Fighting in 2v1 is getting a, giving you a win. Oh yeah. Oh, and, and since we all know it takes two penetrations, generally speaking, to kill a tank, obviously having two to fire at the same time means you kill the tank basically instantly versus, you know, having to wait. Yeah, if you look up north, I brought one uh, ATP to try to cut his reinforcement road and then uh, grabbing the um, shots on the cruiser AA here. Oh, will you finish it off? Yeah, you do. Oh, that's lucky. Look. Yeah, it is, it's a bit lucky. Uh, very happy again to kill, keep killing his <laughs> AA. And your Panzer IV actually was able to kill off that Cromwell. Uh, almost almost went down, but survived. You did lose one Panzer III there. JU-87 now finally getting stopped by the Crusader AA there. Uh, looks like you still picked up both those Cromwells from that strike. Oh, that's painful. Yeah, I mean, that's what uh, 20 Panzer does. If you don't have your AA coverage on, you just get destroyed by the Air Force. Well, and I think you always have to keep in mind when you're playing against a division with a cluster plane, you have to keep your armor more spread out. Yeah, you have to, and you need to have AA. Like, you don't oh, yeah. need much AA to defend, but you need to have some. Yeah, that, well, absolutely. I feel like you should always have AA. Oh, yeah, you should always. How do you feel about calling in AA in the opener? Uh, something you can do definitely depends on the open divisions. Like, if you think he's going to bring a scout plane at the start, it's a very good idea. Something I, I do from time to time. It, it really depends on your opponent, on your opponent and what division he's playing. Yeah, I, I always feel really good when I call early AA and, and then their first plane comes in and it gets immediately stopped. It's just like, oh, you feel so smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do, you do. <laughs> You're like, oh, I just like 4D chest you just now. Like you had no chance. <laughs> I, I yeah, would say... Right I now? Go ahead. Right now in the south, I'm like, I'm sending my Geo to spot what he has. Like I'm thinking, he's not trying to push anymore. What is he doing there? So I'm sending my Geo and I'm spotting a lot of infantry in the forest. And so I'm thinking, well, let's bomb that. <laughs> well, you'll, and, pin, uh, you'll, you'll pin and then you just throw an Urzatz trooping in there to surrender if it gets lucky. Yeah, if I remember to throw the Urzatz because I sometimes <laughs> I forget, uh, unfortunately. Well, as long as you don't forget to follow up an off map, then it's not so bad. Yeah, I don't watch the finals. <laughs> oh no, Mamil, oh no. <laughs> yeah, you, you see the G87 doing a lot of damage, like... Oh yeah, those things co cost 70 points. Look at the damage they do to the infantry. Well, I mean, they have they have a big bomb loadout, and the bombs go basically directly on the target. So, like, they do a high amount of damage. They're just very easy to stop, which is why they're cheap. Yeah, yeah, indeed. In the center, I'm having problems with the Churchill. Like the ones of a 15 mm yep. armor is a is an issue for me right now. So I'm thinking either I bring some heavy AT or the IS-2, or I just overwhelm it with numbers. And that's what I'm going for right now. Yeah, you got the Panzer IVs and stuff. You should be able to get a side shot somewhere, especially with the speed this thing turns at. Yeah, and I feel like it's already very stressed. I, ha I can bring four more pieces on it right now, plus the AT. It's a lot of shots getting on, on the Churchill. Yeah, and it does look like it's a little bit damaged already. Like, something got on it at some point. And now you're getting the... You know, once you start getting all these, like, shooter knocked out crits, it's just sitting there. Like, it's not even fighting anymore. Yeah, and, and the stress bar is fading up, slowly. Well, and we all know how penetration works in this game. One of these Panzer IVs does have a chance of penning, and, and there we go. Yeah, I'm a bit lucky on that one, but I mean, it was either going to die to lucky pen or get stressed out and show side armor. Yeah, I mean... In the south, I, in the south, I pushed out his infantry level for us, and then going on for a push. With a lot of stuff, yeah, you're basically moving your whole front line forward there. Yeah, just keeping the airs uh, and the AT behind. I have a lot of armor, a lot of uh, mechanized units, a lot of infantry. Everything I need for, to push him. He doesn't have AA, so I can just bring more fighters, uh, fighter bomber, Stukas if I need. And my Geo is always giving me more information. The Dutch Stalin is finally coming in the center. I'm thinking like the south now is going to crumble, uh, crumble for him. He's going to send all of his reinforcements there. If I send the Dutch Stalin in the center now, he's not going to have the points to react to it. 
and this is a great example, uh, listeners, of, you know, kind of point counting and feeling where your opponent is going to be, right? So you knew when you make this push down south, his natural reaction is to react to that southern push, which means most of the points will go there, and therefore your next reinforcements go to a different location, not just piling on the same point you already are pushing. Yeah, also try in general to just open new fronts. Like, continuing, of, uh, like if a front grinds to a halt, don't try to push again there immediately. Try to open a new front somewhere else. It's going to be much more effective in general. No, that's great. Great advice. We all we all have the bad habit of, you know, oh, we hold up at one flag and like we all just keep piling into that one area thinking if I crack this open, that'll be it. But it never works that way. Well, your opponent is doing the same thing. So like you're just going to throw things at each other and never no one's going to push really. Well, if you if you can find a new a new point to attack, you can just bunch uh, take one or two takes of income and just overwhelm your opponent there. Great advice for sure. We do see, I mean, Tanner's not even doing anything down south. Uh, instead, he's pouring into the middle and into the north, and they're now into C phase, so both of you are down to the 80 points. Um, yeah, I just killed his AA in the center. He was a bit too aggressive with it. The same as in uh, the first game. Like he, The Crusader is uh, fantastic at supporting uh, tanks and infantry against enemy infantry. But if you do play with them like that and you don't win, you d lose them very quickly, and then you're vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's one of the few AA pieces that we see people using aggressively like that. Um, and you can bite can. them. Like, if you use them aggressively, it can do wonders, but it can also make you lose all of your A, and then you get destroyed by enemy planes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we see your and That's what's happening here, and, and same in the, in the game one. Yeah, and, and then, yeah, their Stukas are absolutely destroying things. It's, it's, it's hard to watch, actually. It's, they're all over the place, just killing stuff constantly. Um, and now I think he's lost the southern reinforcement route, I would think. No, I guess not yet. He not yet. I, I, I'm trying to get to cut it uh, with my uh, mechanized and tons of free here, but I'm a bit overextending. Well, and the Fusiliers do have AT, although it doesn't look like he noticed that they're down there because he could have unloaded right next to your vehicles there and gotten some kills. Yeah, indeed, indeed. The Virch Stallion is getting on the front line now in the center, and he has nothing to counter it. Like, all of the, those Cromwells are very vulnerable to it. Oh yeah, Cromwell 7s are kind of difficult to kill, but they certainly don't do a lot of killing themselves. Yeah, and the Bird Shining can just destroy them in one shot. So if it lands a hit, should pen and should kill. I do have a question for you, Emil. Uh, I want you to comment yeah. on one of my conspiracy theories. Um, do you think that there's a higher accuracy for IS-2 and IS-U-152s on their first shot than it says? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I try to use them, I try to get them like to double vet or triple vet, ideally. Like, uh, like, is, using IS-2152 or IS-152 or playing against them is very frustrating because either they kill or they die, essentially. Like, w one shot tanks are, can be very frustrating, and IS-152 are the worst in that regard. Yes. <laughs> yes, I uh, find. Like, uh, it, it's very frustrating when you use them and they miss all the time. It's very frustrating when you fight against them and they and they hit all the time. Uh, yes, <laughs> all the yeses. <laughs> I think. What... So yeah, I, I try to bring a lot of veterancy on them so that they are less likely to miss. Yeah, I had someone. Yeah, it's, it's always random. Yeah, and, and now we have the triple tick here. Uh, Tanner going down. I, I mean, fantastic play from you in this game. Uh, you really played well and i think most people would rate rank sciabg over 20th panzer in terms of raw strength uh, of the division but uh, i do think 20th as you said does a pretty good job of countering sciabg it's not the best counter like the um, 17th ss i played in the first game was much better at countering it oh yeah i would say anything that has 100 millimeter of armor on a lot of tanks is good at countering sciabg in general like that's what you need just need 100 millimeter of armor and then the cromwells cannot pen you yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, then you're kind of like invincible to their tanks. Yeah. Well, fantastic match there. We see uh, 1,465 kills for Pierre Tanner and 2,930 here from Emil. What a fantastic game. Uh, checking out the kills here. Some Cromwells. Spitfire did okay. Churchill 7 definitely held you up for a little bit. Uh, on your side here. Uh, let's see how Panzer three. Wow. That thing got, got a couple kills there. I'm surprised your JU 87s didn't get more kills. Although I guess they were, you were kind of blind bombing with them pretty often. A bit. I'm um, also like bombing infantry. that has a lot of HP. So uh, like I can kill 10 HP in a uh, infantry squad that has 15. Yeah. It's not dead, but it's still a lot of damage done. And it can also damage uh, other squads around it. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Well, fantastic match. Any other final thoughts? Um, don't watch the finals. <laughs> uh, it's terrible games. <laughs> uh, no, we will. We 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 can't miss them, Emil. I'm sorry. I'm I'm gonna assume uh, I'm gonna assume they were terrible for Yaman, and you absolutely smacked him around. That's what I'm gonna guess. That's my that's my prediction. Uh, I'll let you with your guess. Yep, yep, that's the stuff. Well, thanks for coming on here, guys. And if you guys enjoyed that, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider supporting over on Patreon. Thanks again, Mamil, for coming on, and have a fantastic day.